So this group started praying and saying, boy, what would it be like if we created a church for people who really don't go to church? There are no religious symbols here, no stained glass, and no cross. That you that stood up first, you just couldn't help yourself, yes. It was the call to worship. You know where you are? You're in the trouble, baby! Worship leaders use film clips, video, and loud, often secular music. When it comes to the Word of God, we are told on multiple occasions in both the book of Ephesians and Colossians that we are supposed to admonish and to teach one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, making melody in our heart, and really to help other people know Christ through the music that we're sharing one to another. But in a recent church service that has been now taken down by none other than North Point Community Church's Andy Stanley, the fact is, is they've been singing the songs of fools. And so with me today to discuss this very very important topic regarding the nature of music and how it should be used at our church services is none other than the president and founder of Good Fight Ministries and pastor of Blessed Hope Chapel in Simi Valley, California, Pastor Joe Schimmel. Praise the Lord, bro. Yeah, yeah it's pretty disturbing, you know, when you come into the house of the Lord, you recognize you've been separated from the world, you're changed, you're transformed. Uh, you know, the enemy tries to bring back that old life. Then all you come, you come, and all of a sudden there's songs. Maybe you don't know that Zeppelin is a satanic band, and they're an occult band, and they you know use automatic writing. And Jimmy Page, their leader, practices Crowley and satanic magic. And he said, you know, big names aren't made today through Ready Steady Go, but through practicing uh, the magic of Satanist Lester Crowley. And and he did, and he got a lot of songs, and they became the biggest band of their era by far. They're out selling the Stones, I think, in the '70s, like three to one. And then, you know what, it's, it's, it's a shame because it's almost as though the, these guys are saying, hey, you know what, we're not satisfied worshiping God, you know, yeah. we want to go back to the vomit, you know, and bringing the devil in the church and letting him speak to the people through the pulpit, through their songs in a very seductive way. I can tell you right now, uh, the, fa the people in that, you know, audience when Andy, where Andy Stanley was, a lot of those were being moved far more by the music of Zeppelin by anything Andy Stanley said. Mm. And I'll tell you what, man, music is very alluring. And as a Christian, we've got to fight against the flesh, the world, the flesh, and the devil. And it's, he's very enticing. And even knowing what we know, I'll be driving down the road, I'll hear an old tune, you know, an old, and I can sense a satanic anointing sometimes yeah. in certain songs, which I, especially if I know them, but I, you, some, sometimes you just know. And then uh, then you look into the band, you're like, yeah, these guys are so satanic. But that old stuff, it's like, you know, the... It's like the, you know, the sirens that would draw the sailors, you know, and I'll be driving down the road. And I hear a song from the old days, you know, the enemy wants to come back and I'll just pray and say, Lord, I cast it down in Jesus name. And if the song comes back to me as I'm driving, I'm miles away. I'll, I'll just sing worship songs and praise God until yeah, it amen. cleanses my mind from that junk. But to have it like shouted from the pulpit, it, it's embarrassing too. It's almost like saying, you know what, you know, we give into the devil because he's cooler than God. Yeah. That's not true. Yeah, and I think one of the more important things, hopefully, that they get out of this show is not simply, hey, let's go look at all these terrible things that these ginormous churches, we're going to be talking about churches that are some of the biggest churches in the country, including North Point Community Church there Stanley, with Andy Stanley. It's like 40,000 members or something. I don't it, know. It's yeah, huge. not to mention all the, you know, all the online uh, viewers, yeah, which true. trumps that by a long shot. Right. But, but nonetheless, just the reality of what people don't understand when it comes to the songs that you play and so forth. And we've had to deal with this. I mean, you could go back and look at our entire series on Bethel. And yeah. not only that, we've talked a lot about Hillsong and, and so forth. And the reality is, is that the Bible is clear that we are teaching one another. We are admonishing one another That's right. through these songs. And, you know, something that is really interesting that when you look at the history of the Christian church, that when people wrote about the Christians, plenty the younger specifically, while writing to Trajan, when he talked about the Christians, he talked about how they had a set day that they would meet, and when they would meet, they would sing hymns to Christ as if he was a god, because Jesus Christ is God. But well, that's a pagan saying, as if he, but we know yeah, yeah, he is the yeah. one true God. 
And that's exactly you mean they didn't why. They say they were playing all the pagan music in, in a, <laughs> in, in, you know, singing mm-hmm. Stairway to Heaven? Yeah, no, they certainly weren't. And I think that a lot of people don't realize the amount of teaching that does take place in music. And whether you like it or not, the things you are meditating on, those things that you are, just, just as Joe mentioned, there are these things that, these songs that have these certain anointings that when you hear them, I mean, they get right into your heart. I mean, they really do. And you're meditating on these things over and over again and not realizing what it is you're putting through your mind. Yes, yeah, it's very important that we understand that we are in a spiritual war and that uh, Satan is a musical being and not was, he is. And we know that the angels, they, I mean, they sing way better than any of us. A lot of these artists talk about, you know, like we show Beyonce. I think we've got over you know, almost a million and a half views on our Super Bowl yeah. deal that we did years ago. We've got a few different Super Bowls we cover with her and our couple different ones. And she talks about how she couldn't sing. She's at the BET Awards. And she goes, look, she goes, that's when this entity took me over. But she started celebrating Sasha Fierce. And I couldn't sing like that before, but this it came into me. And these fallen angels are, are very real. real. Uh, the artists themselves acknowledge it. Before I was a Christian, that's a big part of my testimony. I put myself up to this demonic world. They believe in the Creator, God, and uh Christ and man, and then I did the 180 because I recognized I was opening myself to the demonic forces, and they're very, very real. And as I opened the scripture, I began to realize, wow, the Bible says that Satan was an anointed cherub and in Ezekiel 28, and he profaned his sanctuaries. Those are places of worship. And then he was created with tabrets in him. Then you go to Revelation chapter 4, you see four cherubim. What are they doing? They're leading the praise and worship in heaven. And that's, it's crazy when we think about it because chapter 4 rolls into chapter 5 in Revelation and the praise and worship, they're the worship leaders. They begin the praise that goes to God. And what Satan did, he wasn't. He didn't want to be, he, didn't, he wanted, was tired of being the worship leader. He wanted to be God. You know, he's not God. He wanted to redirect that worship to himself. And that's why, you know, he enslaved through sin the first humans. That's why when he came on the scene when Jesus was there, he said, he showed him the kingdoms of the world and said, bow down. And worship me, I'll give all this to you. So we know the scriptures are very, very clear uh, that Satan wants to be worshipped, that he uses music, he's a musical being. The angels themselves, as I mentioned, they can sing. The Bible says that they are created higher than us. Second Peter chapter 2. So they have more abilities, many more abilities than us. One thing the angels will never have, though, is that it's a song of redemption, you know? Mm-hmm. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2 that Jesus didn't die for angels. He tasted death for everyone, but he didn't die for angels. And he died for us, so... We'll sing the new song. It'll be a special song. We'll have resurrected pipes, you know, in the new new body that we know. Uh, pain in heaven, so that means nobody will sing horribly. <laughs> It'll probably sound great, right? Uh, but it's just going to be awesome. But right now, thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. I don't think in heaven. I know in heaven. Uh, I mean, they did like a lot of songs. I, I checked out. I knew they did certain songs, but I hadn't really seen it. I, I'd seen some write-ups and stuff, and I thought, oh, that's a shame, man. And I know, you know, he's somewhat emergent. I know that... Uh, his views of scripture are, you know, atrocious in some oh, ways. Yeah. Those are other discussions, but I know his dad, you know, who, you know, brought him up, you know, uh, teaches one of the most licentious, licentious forms of, you know, uh, the libertine, you know, free grace gospel. And we talk about free grace, we're talking about the libertine version of free grace, not true free grace. Uh, but uh, I know his dad teaches that, you, you know, even if you deny Christ and you become a blasphemer, uh, you have nothing to fear, you know. Uh, and that's that's really really heartbreaking, and that's a lot of people away from Christ that doctrine. So he's kind of brought brought up in that. So there may not be a strong emphasis of holiness in his life in the past. Uh, so it doesn't shock me, but it was a veritable it was a veritable concert, man. I was right. like, I thought he did two or three songs, which is bad enough. But he did Black Dog. He did you know they did Stairway to Heaven. They did Good Times, Bad Times. Uh, they did Ramble On. You know, they did, you know, a bunch of a bunch of songs. It's been a long time since I rock and rolled, you know. Did a lot. I mean, those were my old songs when I was young. Oh, you and mean before you were saved? Before I was saved, yeah, <laughs> yeah. when I was really young. Yeah, yeah. That, that's interesting that you were singing those songs before you were saved. Not, It's not something that you used as a form of worship after you came to know Christ. No, and you know, I've got to be straight up and honest, you know, and uh, as, a, as a newer fellowship, you know, some years went by and when Tony uh, Dean came to, lead worship man they were they were uh uh you know they they were great musicians they were sitting in the fellowship for some time not vying to be on the worship team or anything like that but it was just neat to see them and as they grew in the fellowship and so forth and i got to know them 
uh, you know, they love the Lord. They were worshiping. And, but you know what? They were doing, I think, Tony, what was it? Take it to the streets or something like that. They were changing the lyrics of take it to the streets. And their intention was like, hey, take the gospel to the streets. They changed the words and so forth. I talked to them. I go, man, you got to be really careful with that. It wasn't in our fellowship. It was somewhere else. And I said, hey, love you guys, man. But I just want to let you know. Because we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. The, 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 the walls of the, of the building are just the walls of a building. But we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we're not to allow anything evil. Into, in the Old Testament, you couldn't bring anything evil into the temple. Yeah. The Holy of Holies, you know. And we, as the temple of the Holy Spirit, are supposed to be bring. We're, we're priests of the Lord God. You know, we're not supposed to bring evil into his temple. And I didn't give Tony that deep of a lecture. <laughs> I think I just said, hey, bro, for a lot of people, you know, that's going to bring back a lot of memories. When we were getting stoned, we were doing drugs and so forth. And I said, you know, we wouldn't be having that in our fellowship, you know. And he totally agreed. And he, you know, they, he's grown a little more a lot and so forth. And it was great to see the maturity, you know. But I don't have to be afraid, you know, of walking in and having the worship team even jamming to, you know, uh, you know, a bunch of secular music. Because they know if you're going to be on our worship team, it's about the Lord. And it's not just on Sundays or Wednesday nights. You guys need to be about the Lord through the week. The best way to practice worship is to be a worshiper. If you're if you're a worship leader or on the worship team, you know, hopefully it's not about you. Amen. It's about Jesus, man. It's always all about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And by the way, when you let it be about Jesus, guess what he throws in there? Huge blessings for you. You get to grow in the Lord and be what he's called you to be. But you don't serve him to just so you can be blessed. You serve him mainly to give him the glory that he deserves. So if you're involved in worship, I want to encourage you. Don't make it about you and think, man, how do I look? And what are people going to think about me and my playing and everything else? I mean, you want to play excellently like David did before the Lord. You want to work at, at you know, the, the gift that Lord, the Lord's given you uh, to maximize your praise of him and to glorify him. But you don't want it to be about you. You know, you don't, uh, that's what's going on in a lot of the church today. People are like, and that's how Satan is, you know, and we don't want to be little devils like, I want people to praise me. I say, Lord, how can I bring praise and glory and honor to you? And the best way to do that is to come in after a whole week of just praising and worshiping, that's just your life. Yep. So when you're when you're up there before people, you're just doing what you already do, and it should be supernaturally natural. Yeah, no, and I couldn't agree more. And I can tell you this from I because <coughs> I watched they sold their souls to rock and roll. I gave my life over to Christ, and I literally went from going to Ozfest, listen to Slipknot, Kill Switch Engage, and Devil Driver, and Hate Breed, and these bands. And then next thing you know, I'm like, okay, I got to figure out some. Christian worship, and I, I think uh, maybe Newsboys was the first CD I got. I was like, I wasn't really into that at the time. Uh, and I was like, okay, but Lord, I'm going to find some worship songs, and I'm going to worship you because I don't know what that means in terms of what music to listen to, what songs to listen to, but I'm going to try and try and try, and I'm just going to be obedient to you. And then next thing I knew, just my heart was was changed, and part of sanctification was growing in Him where now all I do is sing. Like I'm always singing to the Lord. I sing with my children I sing with my wife. I sing with my friends. We're always singing. It's always Praise a God. part of our life. And just making sure I understood uh, the power behind it. Because there is, you mentioned already, David, the spiritual warfare aspect of it. When it comes to worship, you have Saul, the Holy Spirit, leaving him. And now a demon oppressing him. And then what happens? David comes. He plays the harp for him. And the demon flees. You see in Second Chronicles 20. Yeah, they have pushes. Yep. 21 through 35, and you see so clearly that they went once they began singing and praising the Lord, the enemies, they started fighting themselves. <laughs> the yeah. enemies started fighting themselves and routed themselves from the singing and yeah, praise and of the Lord. In the context of what Chad's talking about, yeah. they had the praise and worship leaders go first. Yep. And Judah would go first, and Judah means praise, and or or it was, I'm sorry, the, 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 yeah, praise, and it was about giving God praise. And then they said ambushes, and there's a, a form of spiritual warfare. When we seek the Lord, it's not that. The music is somehow magical, but when we draw near to God, he draws near to us. We resist the devil, he flees from us. When we seek the Lord and we submit to him, God works, man. He does, he's, he, he draws, he protects, he keeps, and he said, hey, just be obedient to me, you know? So, and as you mentioned, Chad, and there's a really good scripture here, which fits the title of our uh, show today in Ecclesiastes 7, 5. It's better to listen to the rebuke of wise, a wise man than for one to listen to the song of of fools. Now that cuts out pretty much secular music. You know why? Because how are fools described in the book of Proverbs? They're Same those who reject that, right? God's counsel. <laughs> They're those who don't submit. Yeah, he wrote Sol Solomon defined the fool better than anybody and throughout scripture. He doesn't fear God. 
He does his own thing. He's incorrigible. Uh, there's different grades of fools. There are those that are naive. And then you see a gradation up to there. There's others that are simply obstinate. And there's others who mock God or the things of God, you know. And there's this gradation of different types of fools. But in the secular world, you have all the way to Satanists, to those who, I mean, think of the secular world and think of their, even their love songs are, are not biblical. I mean, I mean, if there's very little said in a love song, but as soon as it gets at all, you know, because if I'm singing a love song as a non-Christian, it's you and me, baby, and and if without you, I'm going to die. That's so unbiblical. <laughs> so it's like, you know, yeah, yeah. It, it's you and me, and praise God, we have the Lord. And praise God, he enriches his life. And praise God, no matter what we go through, uh, we're going to love each other. And praise God, we have the example of how to love each other because of what Christ did. And praise God, he's ordained things in our lives to, to test us so we can come stronger and closer together and show the love of Christ to each other. It's, it's totally different. In fact, before I was a Christian, one of my, you know, I mean, you know, one of my songs was, Do You Still Love Me, Baby? Do You Still Love Me? And it was DSL, Love Me, Baby. DSL, Love Me, Baby. Do you still love me? And I was doing that on purpose because DSL is writing backwards. Uh, not even knowing what Crowley mm -hmm. taught at the time. I was in the Flip See, we're writing backwards. And it was DSL was LSD backwards. Mm -hmm. I thought that was so cool that some people will catch what I'm doing there, you know? And there's all kinds of things going on uh, in the world where we don't even know what's behind it, but uh, especially when you get songs that are by bands that are in the occult and they're, I want to hold your hand. I just want to hold your hand, right? Beatles, before you know it, now they're not just singing about holding your hand. You know, now they're singing about getting into mystical experiences and and they're interviewing about, you know, how they're more popular than Jesus. And when you put your hand in their hands, you don't know where they're going to take you either. But when you put your hand in Jesus' hands, you know exactly where you're going. No, amen. And I think it's so important for us to realize this too. Just as believers, we are a royal, royal priesthood. And one of my favorite texts when really trying to say, Lord, I, I really want to understand what I'm, what I'm supposed to be doing in worship. And, and what does this mean to you even, Lord? And just leaving it up to him was in Hebrews chapter 13. When I'm reading in there, that we continually offer a sacrifice, but that sacrifice is a praise to our God, that the fruit of our lips we give thanks to his name, and that we would also, in doing so, not neglect in doing good and sharing, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. And I don't know about you, but when it comes to being a part of this royal priesthood, because of Jesus Christ, we have been given this honor that we get to go forth being a minister of reconciliation. I want to do what David did in Psalm chapter 40, verse 3 through 5, where he specifically mentions that he had a new song in his heart, a song of praise Amen. to his God, that guess what would happen? Many would hear of it and come to fear Amen. and put their trust in the Lord. That's what I want to do. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that psalm up, David. Uh, or David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if only. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, it's just because I love that psalm. He, he took me out of the pit, the miry clay, Amen. you know, a pit that he's stuck in that you can't get out of. So we're saved by his grace. He put my feet on the rock, right? And you know, but and it's in the, in the Hebrew could mean a, a pit of noise. Mm, that's I think that's interesting, and that's because they would use those pits to catch wild animals, lions and you know, wolves, and they'd be howling and you know just noise. And sounds and, like North Point Church, actually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then we're redeemed from that old life, and then he gives us a, a, a new song. And and you know, David writes that before they understood who the Messiah was, and when the Messiah comes, we get the new song. And there's a number of times where it talks about this new song. So as Christians, you know, Paul says, put off the old man. In Colossians, he talks about how we put off the old man. We're supposed to continue to put it off. In Ephesians, it's a, it's a process. And keeping that old man dead and, and down and dead. And did a message on it recently on Wednesday a little bit. And it says when you, it talks about the things of the new man and things of the old man. But one of the things of the new man is to sing psalms and hymns and mm. spiritual songs. Now he's telling the church of Colossae, that's a pagan area, man, with a lot of pagans. <laughs> who, they were into their music, man. The church of Ephesus, man, a, a burgeoning uh, city there, you know, in Asia Minor there. And he's telling them, get rid of the old stuff, man. And sing. Now pick up the your word, man, the word of God, and sing psalms and spiritual songs to the Lord. And the, he was telling them. And by doing that, it's really interesting. I think this is profound. In one place when he says to do this, he says to be filled with the Holy Spirit singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Because of the temple of the Holy Spirit, and that's in Ephesians chapter uh, 5, where it says, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. He says to be filled, with, don't be drunk with wine. That's the old songs and the old music. You know, David talked about being the song of the drunkards, you know? That's mm, the mockery yep, songs, yep. the songs that are godless, Christless. And I, we pray that God speaks to your hearts to just really get rid of all the old stuff, man, and bring in the new, you know? 
And because what happens is he's saying to get rid of the old and put on the new. That was a big deal for them because their cultures had their own music. And when he's saying that, he says to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What's interesting in the temple, when Solomon dedicated the temple, they began to praise and worship the Lord. And do you remember what happened? The smoke of his presence, the, his, his, his glory, his kabat filled. It was just his glory so filled that they had to get down on their faces because it was so heavy. The heaviness of God, his presence, man. And when we praise and worship the Lord, guess what happens? He fills us with his spirit, you know. And it's remarkable because you want to be spirit filled with the spirit, we're commanded to be filled with the spirit. There's different ways in seeking Jesus that we get close to the Lord and we can be more surrendered and, and, and be more filled with the Holy Spirit. But it's a present tense imperative. It's a command. Uh, it's a command. It's an imperative. It's present tense, meaning continually be filled or controlled with the Holy Spirit. So when we're, we're crying out to the Lord and we're saying, Lord, I, I want to know you more. I want to I serve you more. And we praise him. It creates this intimacy. It allows him to just flood our hearts and his, his, his glory, his kabod to just fill us and it's interesting, that parallels Colossians chapter 3, 15, 16, 17 there, where he says the same thing, uh, Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. But it's interesting. Well, how, how, do we, how do we fill the Spirit? Right there he says, let the word of Christ, he doesn't say fill, fill the Spirit there, he says, let the word of Christ fill you. That shows me there's a connection between being filled with the Holy Spirit and being filled with Christ's word. So when I'm singing Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, I'm singing God's truth, the Spirit of truth, you know, God's the Spirit of truth, he inspired, the Holy Spirit inspired this word, I am opening myself up and drawing to a greater filling of the Holy Spirit who already lives in us. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. However, Satan has a counterattack. And we know that. In fact, we were talking about what the early church was happening in the early church. Christostom, one of the early uh, church fathers, he had said that God has given us the book of Psalms. Okay? 150 chapters, by the way, to keep us from the music of demons. Mm, that's such a good now, quote. he said that, man. A long time ago, yeah. you know, the 300, 1,600 years ago, yeah. see a few hundred years after Christ, right? And I have a, a whole list of what the early church fathers said about music. They were very, very careful, wanted their hearts to be dedicated to the Lord. And that was before VH1, MTV, radio, satellite music, you know, uh, on Sirius and all this stuff. It just gives you whatever you want to stick your hands on. He saves the prince of the power of the air, and he floods the airways with music that would draw us away from the Lord. And we have to be careful because it's very alluring and very powerful. And we just need to stay in love with the Lord and and return to our first love. If we drifted away and we're like, yeah, I used to praise him, I used to worship, but I've gotten back into that old stuff. And you know, and well, you know what? Go go and do those things as Jesus said you did it first. Come back to your first love and say, Lord, put a song in my heart. Help me recognize what you did for me, how good you are, how this life is short. How many praising you for eternity, man? May I begin now? You know? No, and. The- it's really important, and guys, uh, if you're if you're coming on to this late, or you know, uh, please make sure you see the intro because I wanted to go over a few of the artists before we show how Andy Stanley made his reasoning for why he would allow this music to be played in his church. Not that we expect all that much from him, considering his views on scripture, considering his views. I mean, some of his views even on salvation as well. Uh, unhitching from the Old Testament. Jesus loves me, this I know for the Bible tells me so. Did a whole series about how that's not actually true. Just some really strange things. Um, But nonetheless, there are a number of churches that we played in the very beginning in the intro. And at those churches, one of them that is specific is Church by the Glades in Coral Springs, Florida. It's a very large church pastored by David Hughes. And this church played some of the more Man, some just straight demonic music. Yeah. You could see in the intro, they're dressed up as, you know, as skeletons. They're singing Billie Eilish. Mm-hmm. Now, now, Joe, I want to start there, and I want to go through these artists kind of quickly because we got a lot, of, a lot of clips to play. But when we're talking about playing this music, we're not just picking on Mr. Stanley here because other churches are doing this sort yeah. of nonsense. And Church by the Glades is far worse. I'm going to just be honest with you. With what they play, the music they play, and just to, as a starting point, trying to be awesome to the crowd coming in. I mean, first of all, it's an embarrassment. Regard, even, even if we weren't dealing with the sinful nature, you should be embarrassed at yourself for doing this. But, but nonetheless, you see them dressed up as skeletons playing Billie Eilish. Why should someone not play Billie Eilish specifically at their church? Well, I'll probably hit her longer than most uh, so we can play the clips. The clips aren't that long, but uh, we want to we hit her pretty hard. Uh, Chad did a thing on her recently. Uh, 
month and a half ago. You want to check that out. I'm in the process. I, in fact, I sat down to do a voiceover on it, and then we decided, hey, we're so close to finishing Marvel. Let's just focus on that. Which, <laughs> by the way, I don't know if we should mention this, yeah. but we're looking at the preview Tuesday because we already saw it, and but now it's got the music, and it's fully done, the first one. The other one we already have shown in a few places, uh, the overview one. So we've got two pretty much in the tank now. And Tuesday we look at it because Tony's put the music in the background, and Josh's done editing it. So we're excited about that. But uh, Billie Eilish is absolutely demonic, you know? And I'll just just say a few things really quick. I was just, when I was getting ready to do, I had already had a lot of stuff because I've exposed her before, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to update it and make sure anything new. And I think she wears upside down crosses. She had 666 Instagram uh, followers that she allowed, and she tried to keep that number at 666. Now she, of course, uh, that she followed. She, 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 she got followed. a ton of followers, okay. You know, 100 million almost or so. But, uh, Billy Eilish, well, way, way more than that, probably. I haven't looked, looked for a while, but she, that she followed. That's a big deal. Billy Eilish is following me, but she'd keep it at 666, which is the number of the Antichrist, right? And then, but every time she got a new one, she'd drop it, that, that one because she wanted to keep it at 666. And people started crying and go on YouTube, she dropped me, you know? And, and then she said later, well, I just like the number 666. So I noticed that she was wearing upside down crosses. And I wanted to see what, you know, where that came from. We know that people wear them in Satanism and stuff. But did she just pick up a piece of jewelry and thought, oh, this looks cool? No. The woman in Australia that made her jewelry for her, customized jewelry, she said that Billie Eilish, I think she was 17 at the time, called me and said, can you make me some upside down crosses? You know? And she was going through states of paralysis. Her first or second album, my son, I talk about the satanic anointing, my son Josiah said, dad, he, he was managing a sushi restaurant at the time. And he said, dad, he goes, man, it's crazy because I've heard this gal and it was just ocean eyes. Nothing overtly demonic about the song and the lyrics. She had to come out with a really occult stuff, and she was probably, what, 16, 17 at the time. And he goes, Dad, she's got that demonic anointing when you've, because he's seen stuff I've exposed for years, and he's really onto, onto what's going on. He goes, Dad, that girl's going to be big. And I really sense that spirit behind her, you know? And then she comes out with Bury a Friend. Uh, she comes out with an entire album, which has her roll, eyes rolled up in her head, like she's possessed, like the exorcist. And in her video, she's like contorting and everything. And, and she's in bed and she talks about the whole album. She said every song was based on her nocturnal occult type experiences when she was in bed. And uh, sh she would go into sleep paralysis, which is sometimes called demon in the bedroom. And people that have heard that, they go, man, what she's saying and what she's saying in interviews, that, they go, that sounds a lot like your testimony. A couple of these guys said that. They're like, that's like your testimony, man. Again, yeah, before I was a Christian, they knew all these songs came to me and everything else. It gets a lot deeper. But she's fully satanic. But it's interesting, Chad, that you mentioned the skeleton situation. You have skeletons and so forth. I was counseling a gal, and I've counseled her a few times now. Uh, dear young lady, you know, in her early teens or mid-teens, I'd say. And she jumped off second floor to commit suicide and wanted to die. And got to the root of what was going on. And one of the main things is she said, you know, she was getting the music of Billy Eilish. And Billy Eilish makes death look cool and my wife and I before we were to see her again we prayed because she ended up being you know two different times taken away the second time was for, I think for a week or so and our hearts were just breaking and weren't tears bawling with her crying with her pleading with her to, to see what the enemy is doing it's a great uh, great little young gal and super bright and everything but just really got that Satan got his talents in her her heart and her parents just love the Lord so my you know just I look at them and say, man, they're such a good example for us believers, you know, missionaries and so forth. And But man, and they warn against that stuff. They And boom, it got in. Satan got in. He slithered in there, right? He's, he's a serpent, man. And guess what? Uh, we pray, God, speak to her heart. Open her eyes. Help her see. And man, guess what? You know, even if it takes giving her a dream, all of a sudden, and she's kind of shy. Her parents call me, call us. She had this crazy dream when she was in lockdown, you know? And, and she wants to share it with you. She's sharing with me that my mom in my dream uh, was telling me, we need to clean out uh, the, clean out your skeletons, you know, from your closet or your, or your bedroom. I don't know if she said it's closet or bedroom. And she said no, because she didn't want her mom getting in her stuff. And she was like, no, no. And then she went into her bedroom and she sees these faces of people that she didn't know, but they were like her friends. But it was all like a feeling of death. And she said, when they turned their heads, you see, the other side was just all skeleton, skull, and then the other side. And I said, I don't know if this is the interpretation, done. I said, but you know what? It very well could be that God is communicating to you that, that your mom is, because she's trying to get her away from Billy Eilish, and she was not giving it up. 
that your mom is trying to get you away from these demonic powers. Satan, who represented by the skeletons, the demonic entities that represent death, and they're using these human faces like Billy Eilish to communicate. Well, the crazy thing about this is, guess what? Billy Eilish going through paralysis, showing even communicating in her in her music. I mean, let me look. Let's show you the lyrics. It's really crazy when she sings about. Uh, well, you know what? I'm just going to tell you, in the song, Bury a Friend, she literally sings about, you know, I've got to sell my soul because she basically says it's part, part of the deal, you know, and so forth. And that's where she contorts and everything. And, and she basically says she's identified with that monster. That's and, and now she's basically become a conduit for it, that demonic world and so forth. And they're getting their talons in the world. So it just interested me, Chad, that you said, because I didn't know about the skeleton part. I didn't watch that clip that, that you said that, uh, you know, they're doing Billy Dollar songs and they're with skeletons and everything else. I'm like, we're letting Satan just right into the congregation. We're pretending. It reminds me of this. Jesus said, you know, when he leaves, he warned us, you know, not to get drunk with the drunkards and, and, and you know, beat the maidservants and stuff like that and say, oh, my Lord delays his coming. Well, you remember when there's a picture of that, Moses' picture of Christ. Moses goes up, not to heaven, but he goes up to Mount Sinai and he delays his coming. And the people decide, man, let's, uh, you know, worship Yah, right? And let's build a golden calf. And they called him Yahweh or mm -hmm. Yah. What were they doing? They were doing the old pagan worship that you'd find in places like Egypt where they came from. They went back to the world mm -hmm. and they just baptized. And that's right. They just baptized wow. that and called and said, this is worshiping God still. And that's a picture of when the Lord, well, the Lord's not coming for a while. We're going to say we're Christians, but we're going to go back to the vomit, man, and worship the things of this world. Those pictures are there for a reason. Paul said these things were written so we would not fall in the same way they did. And he warns that many of them were wiped out before they got to the promised land. In fact, most of them. And that's a warning to us, man, that we could fall away and we can go back to the vomit. So we need to be really concerned. And as pastors, we're called to be shepherds. You know, Chad's an elder in our fellowship now. And we're called to oversee, overseers, and make sure we don't let the enemy... Now we can we can't only we can't we can't live people's lives for them, but we have to speak the truth and we have to be an example because we're gonna have a stricter judgment and God help these guys before they stand for God to get right, you know? Yeah, amen. That and that's the that's the chief concern as we see this this going on. And I think that so many people, you know, obviously quoting Ecclesiastes seven five specifically, quoting these different verses, talking about this and very important to understand, first of all, our point of worship. Second of all, to recognize that you are teaching one another with these things. Yeah. So when somebody sings a song like, I don't know, Welcome to the Jungle uh, by Axl Rose, once again, another Church by the Glades cover that they did, and they put this production behind it. They put together it like it's a music video for them, and it is a heartbreaking endeavor. So we've seen the spiritual nature, and, and like, like you said, you went further, obviously, on Billie Eilish, then we'll go with some of these other ones. But we're talking about Guns N' Roses here and what kind of picture Guns N' Roses is to the rest, of, to the church as a whole as to, hey, we should be singing these guys' songs. Yeah, you know, you hear them, uh, you know, just Guns N' Roses, <laughs> we don't have to say a lot about them. It's kind of, <laughs> you know, uh, Axl Rose is an incredibly rebellious guy through the years. Uh, drugs and partying and that whole party, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It's kind of like the old, you know, each week can be merry for tomorrow we die. Yeah. You know? And if we're doing that and we're identifying with the old life, like listen to uh, Isaiah chapter 5. It sounds to me like Guns and Roses. Oh, yeah. Woe to those who rise early in the morning that they may pursue strong drink, who stay up late in the evening that wine may aflame them. That breaks God's heart. But look at the next verse, what breaks his heart too. Their banquets or their parties in some translations are accompanied by lyre and harp and tambourine and flute and by wine but they that's important but they do not pay attention to the deeds of the Lord nor do they consider the work of his hands in other words they're, they've got music and everything but it's not about the Lord at all you know I just did a wedding yesterday uh, a, a sweet couple in the fellowship young couple uh, I think early 20s and just so sweet man and, and they just man there was so much of this so much not just the ceremony was just beautiful with the music and all but uh, just the Christian music that had so much chain and chain and a lot of really beautiful Christian music during the reception. 
And yeah, there's secular people there who's like probably like, what this? But they could have just played a lot of raunchy, ugly music and a lot of music that would glorify, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, but they didn't. And I really appreciated that. And it was such a, a peaceful, beautiful time. And, and it, it breaks the Lord's heart that after all he's done and given us life, and that we don't, we pay attention to the old music and we don't put in the new, the new on the new song, you know? Yeah, no, it is heartbreaking. And so many of these songs, once you, t- you talked about over and over again, that anointing. And so many of these songs you hear if you go to sporting events or even your kids' sporting games, they're playing it in the background, right? Bells Bells is probably the most popular <laughs> yeah. last few if years. If you're a San Diego years. Padres fan, you grew up with Trevor Hoffman every time he'd come out, right? Um, Satan gets you, Satan gets you, take you to hell. That's some of the lyrics in that song, man. It's like, and they're all like, yeah, Bells Bells. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's sing this. I mean, it's, it's, it's horrendous. And... Then we look at, and, and one of the more interesting ones when it came to Flat Irons Church, and we're going to play a clip from their pastor, but before we do, one of the songs that they sang, and, and I know we can't go in too depth, but if you want a lot more depth just on Bono and U2, you mm. can check out not only this emerging church, but we have an entire separate DVD. Yes, it had to be an entire separate video just on the, the spiritual connection uh, between Bono, U2, yeah. Bono, U2 the demonic activity going on as well as the submerging church or the emergent church or what is now being coined as just progressive Christianity or the deconstruction movement. Really? Yeah. That's oh, what it, that's I, kind of the I lingo. talked in regard to you too. I talked to Chris Rowe when I was out, I was invited to Ireland and, and you know, to speak at a church and who actually they sold their souls for rock and roll there. So I did a full blown presentation. And by the, by the way, just why we're talking about that. The reason why is if you watch the very intro of this, at Flat Irons Church, they are worshiping at basically a rock concert, singing out over and over again. I, they're at church. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Obviously, they hadn't found Jesus there. Yeah, and, and, and when, yeah, when you look at it, it's interesting to say that, Chad, because when Bono sings that lyric, it's even more blatant than that. He says, I wear a cross around my neck, which represents Christ, right? But I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Like that's, he's not ultimately. It's not about Christ ultimately. There's something more. And then he sings about all the colors bleeding into one which from his standpoint, that's a lot about kingdom dominionism, kingdom now. He says it's not about pie in the sky, you know. He says it's about right now, you know. And he says he doesn't exhibit any fruit of the Spirit. And he asks if he's a Christian. If you don't have any fruit of the Spirit, Jesus said they'll know you by your fruit. And by the way, I sh- we show in that video, and it was actually one big deal in this emerging church because I show all these emerging church leaders that they look at Bono as their main inspiration. And that's how the emerging, that as the architect of the emerging church, you know. But I show in there because I, I had a book like this big, man, and on Bono that somebody gave me, and you too. And I'd done a lot of research, exposed him for some time. But in that book, as I looked through it and flipped around and stuff, because I was not going to read five, six hundred pages on, on Bono you too. I was, um, thank God I read what I read, man, because all of a sudden uh, Bono's being interviewed. And this was a book that he did with a good friend of his who wrote it, sitting in the bar with him, and he said, yeah. And he said, yeah, Bono are talking about how he wants to start Zoo TV and stuff. And he wants to compete with MTV maybe, but they're not sure because they might lose giving attention to their band and they don't want to compromise their music because they're the biggest band in the world. And he says, because Bono wants, uh, wants Zoo TV, if he starts it, to be an eye to the world to see the movies of Kenneth Anger. Kenneth Anger, Anger was the co-founder of the Church of Satan, folks. He, uh, has, he, wrote, he did the movie Lucifer Rising where Jimmy Page's uh, music is used and, and and Mick Jagger, you know, and, he, and you got Jimmy Page, you know, under a big picture of a Lester Crowley. He does a lot of Crowley movies, a lot of, uh, that is, I should say, Kenneth Anger. And he wants, wanted to do TV. He said, he mentioned two people, an eye to the world for the world to see the movies of Kenneth Anger. We know what they're about, man. It's a huge deception. Now, we, we are, we're prayerful. Uh, we're merciful because we recognize a lot of people don't know. And a lot of young people that are being inundated with this stuff right now in the churches. And, but we're not supposed to be conformed to the world, the Bible says, but to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. A lot of pastors, you know, whether they know or not, though, to some degree, there's a culpability, man, because you know you're supposed to keep your flock separate and you're supposed to immerse them in God's word and his truth and music that glorifies him. So it's, 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 it's very scary what's going on. Yeah, and if you guys, we're going to be doing an entire episode on 511 News with Joe regarding Elevation Church soon because if you guys didn't know, Stephen Furtick over there, and Elevation Church, the very church is named after U2's tour, the Elevation Tour. So really interesting. And I don't want to give too much away because I think that will be an important episode for us to get to in the future. But nonetheless, Joe, we've, we've kind of gone through, we already gone through Led Zeppelin. We're going to go through further on Led Zeppelin because those are more of the four bands that we were really playing. Trust me, there are plenty. We didn't even know how many, which clips to use because there are so many. But some of these 
um, I would say blind leading the blind pastors and shepherds leading people into a ditch, uh, they try to give an answer for why they actually play this music. And Jim Bergen there at Flat Irons Church in Lafayette, Colorado, actually gives an answer here after mentioning certain bands that they have, they play their songs, including guys like Eminem, and then you'll hear him talk about Leonard Skinner and so forth. Mm. But you can hear his answer, and we're going to try to reply to what he says the reason is, or what are the reasons that they, at their church, at Flat Iron Church, play secular music for worship. That's why we do the music we do. And I'll be honest with you, all right, I'm just going to be really honest. Right? Sometimes we'll, we'll just play a song because it's an awesome song. That's all, Skinner, any, anything, all right, all right? Well, but, and it reflects something good that's been given to us from God, like love or passion or sex in marriage, intimacy, where to look for hope and where not to look for hope and your heart is falling apart. Listen, we'll, we'll play songs, whether they mention Jesus or not, because the truth they speak of comes directly from Jesus. So Joe, a couple of things there. First of all, the song is awesome, right? Right after talking about Eminem and other artists, I believe Kendrick Lamar right before that as well, but then, you know, then he, Leonard Skinner and, and so forth. It's awesome. I mean, where are you in, in your walk with Christ, in your sanctification, that you, before we even get into what his real answer was for why they play this junk, but where are you in your sanctification process when you're listening to these songs, you listen to Eminem? By the way, that's the context of what he's talking about. You listen to Eminem and think, this song's so awesome, we gotta play this at church. Yes, of, of the popular artists that I've studied, there's two that stick out as far as that write the most about selling their soul to Satan. And it's Ozzy Osbourne, several songs about it. I was like, when I was going through a lot of his music and putting uh, our, our videos together, I was like, man, he sings about this a lot, man. And Eminem, you know? Eminem has so many songs about selling his soul, I couldn't even use a, you know, a lot of stuff he says. It's just so much yeah, of it. Yeah, it's redundant in the presentation, but yeah. in a good way. Yeah, yeah it's it's I play really short clips in the presentation from different songs. And, you know, and again, he, you know, he talks about being the rain man, you know? Because he's a conduit from that demonic world that just all comes through him. And then you're letting, this guy's in huge trouble. God, bring him to repentance. Give him a change of heart. Make him fear and love you and want to praise you and not the world. And set his congregation free because a lot of them are probably led down that path. And when you start getting into that music, I didn't know Skinner had all these songs about a love relationship within the marriage context. Huh, I never heard about heard that before. Maybe they have one or two, but you know what? It's going to be about getting drunk typically, and things like that, uh, the secular music that we're talking about, and it's it, it's going to grease the skids, because when Chad said we're supposed to teach one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, uh, when the show opened today, uh, that's what Satan does, you know? He knows to do that, too. He's a very powerful entity. He knows that God does that, and he wants us not to be into God's music, to keep us from God's Word, and he wants to teach us. I mean, we learn the ABCs, ABCs, you know, through music. I mean, that's it's a way we teach our kids. God knows that, okay? Uh, the, the problem is with secular music. It's not just something benign like learning the ABCs. It has, there, there's the artist, Jesus said, he that's not with me is against me. He that gathers not with me scatters abroad. So we're talking about something that was given to us by God. Zephaniah says the Lord sings over us. Zephaniah is beautiful. Like, wow, he mm -hmm. sings over us. It's a trip. And I've used the example of the high priest, which is a picture of Jesus, how there were these, these golden bells and pomegranates, and it was a melodious sound as he served God. He's a picture of Christ. I, I think we're just going to be blown away by the beauty of Jesus and the music and everything that is about him. And he's a radiant, singing, beautiful music more than anyone, right? And it's amazing. We're supposed to praise him for who he is as our creator. And it's just all has gotten twisted. So it's just it's just heartbreaking because we're, 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 we're leading the people astray and encourage them to get into music that's teaching them philosophies and at worst mm. at best humanism at worst satanism <laughs> but and everything in between no i think that's a, a really important point for people to understand and i think this this lines up exactly with the scripture that i was thinking about which is psalm one it's the genesis of the book of psalms and it says to not sit down in the seat of scoffers to not meditate on the wickedness yeah. And to stay away from those scoffers, because there is a man, there are two men in that. You have a man that meditates on God's word day and night. And he's like the tree planted against the water that bears fruit in season. Then you have the man that sits with the seat of scoffers, yeah. with the wicked. And the counsel of the wicked. And the counsel, that's exactly right. The counsel of the wicked. What more counsel are you getting than when sitting? And think about this. 
I have never walked down the street and thought, man, I can't get that sermon out of my head. I just keep, it just keeps going in my head. But you know what? If the wrong tune, then, bro. <laughs> <laughs> if the wrong, no, just sing in melody. No, yeah, I know. Uh, if, if the wrong tune, if I'm, you know, working or wherever it is, I'm at the gym, whatever it may be, the wrong tune comes on. Ah, oh, dude, this thing's stuck in my head. I got to go outside. I got to worship. I got to meditate on something else. Because I'm not going to sit in the seat of scoffers. I'm not going to meditate on the counsel of the wicked. And to me, when you say, even if it doesn't preach Christ, it may preach small truths about Christ. Give me a break. What a lie to just say what the real facts are. You just like to go to your concert at your church and you love the feeling the flesh gives you. Bro, you you. can't watch porn. God made the human body. Joe. That's exactly right. It yep. reflects his That's creative exactly ability. What I was thinking. You know, it's so pathetic. I had the same argument with someone a long time ago about Harry Potter, right? It's just entertainment, you know? There's some real redeemable qualities. Guys that I love that call themselves Christians too say, oh, I'm going to make write books about this and show the redeemable quality of yeah. witchcraft. And it'd be the same thing. I'm going to show the redeemable, redeemable quality here of pornography because there's so much entertainment. Look at the storylines. They love each other. Give me a break. This is profane. You're putting just wickedness before you and meditating on it. And your heart's going to come hard. And it's really interesting. They're called Flat Irons Church because I believe he is searing his conscience with a hot iron. And it's wicked and it breaks my heart. Huh, that's an interesting reference because right when you said that, Chad, I was thinking of 1 Timothy chapter 4 and how it talks about their sear their 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 consciences with a hot iron, but I wasn't thinking of that verse. I was in another <laughs> verse. I'm like, that's, that's interesting. Funny. Because a couple of verses before that, uh, just two, three verses before that, he says, Paul says the last times, you know, he said, uh, they'll be seducing spirits. And many will, he says, at the last time, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits mm-hmm. and doctrines of, of demons. demons. And it goes on, yeah. <laughs> seducing spirits, doctrines of demons, and those Demons are going to cause people to sear their consciences. And it's interesting. Seducing spirits. What? How does Satan use, what does he use to seduce us? Music is so mm. seductive. I mean, every civilization knows that. That's why you have the story of the sirens in Greek mythology leading the, uh, you know, uh, the sailors to their destruction uh, because their music was so alluring because, and the word music comes from the word muse. Muse, uh, these were entities that, that uh, conveyed uh, artistic type abilities on people, including music. And these nymphs would draw them with their singing, uh, and they just under, they they had these. And it's pretty powerful because you had Plato, and and I don't quote Plato and, and say, man, Plato is great and Socrates, but they recognized yeah. that they, there's several quotes from these guys where say even these secular, you know, godless uh, men, uh, but w- who had some sense of you know right and wrong. Uh, and also a twisted sense as well when you look at them. Uh, but they said, man, they talked about music being so powerful and it can be so subversive and so destructive to the morals of society. I'm like, man, they know more than a lot of Christians know. Uh-huh. So it's interesting. These sailors would go and, of course, uh, uh, the idea was that you had they had to put like wax or whatever in their ears, you know. And uh, there's, I don't want to get in the Ulysses and stuff, but, you know, being tied to the mast of the ship so he wouldn't be seduced. And then other, because what would happen is they would they would float their boats, man, to uh, the seashore and they'd be destroyed by the rocks and then their their souls would be ferried to Hades. The whole idea was these spirits, you know, the using music and seductive singing to bring, to bring people to destruction. I thought, well, that's interesting because Satan knows a lot about what God's word says and in the ancient civilizations, they understand there's a spiritual war. Right now, the world's become so materialistic and much of the church has, they don't see the spiritual war and they don't see what the scriptures say about Satan is a musical entity and he uses music to deceive the masses. In fact, in chapter 18 of uh, Revelation, when Babylon is destroyed, guess what? She, you know, she deceives the, the world, her merchants are the great men of the earth who deceive the world through their pharmacia, their drugs. And also it talks about uh, her musical instruments won't be heard in her anymore. Because she's a deceptive, wicked harlot, and Satan uses music. And we shouldn't let her in the church. We're not to be the whore of Babylon. We're to be the bride of Christ. No, amen. And I think it, it is so important for us to, to really understand the spiritual aspect of it. And we're going to get into that here because we're going to be playing a clip from Andy Stanley. We already looked, obviously, at Jim Bergen there from Flat Irons Church. But we want to hear Andy Stanley as to why, because... The reality is a lot of these guys, just like Andy Stanley, he makes these sermons that specifically are to entice people to be outraged so that he can feel, I think, I don't want to judge his heart, but a lot of times it's like, I want to get this publicity. 
towards me? Why would you say, you know, Jesus loved me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, but really not really? Mm-hmm. You know, because that's not really where we get our, our the truth and, and reality of, of of who we are in Christ and so forth. But but why would you say these things? We need to unhitch from the Old Testament, all this stuff that yeah. he's saying. And he's using this inflammatory language to get publicity. I, I You can see that. And then you see this situation where he play, has this worship band or allows, we'll say, that's what he says, he allows them to play Led Zeppelin. And here he's going to give you the excuse why he let them play a set of Led Zeppelin songs. <laughs> Taylor. Unbelievable. And uh, just so you know, Chris was homeschooled. So there, that'll teach you. You can be seated for just a minute. Unbelievable. Yes, I saw those grins. Pamela Holiday, I think you were the first person. Was Pamela, who was over here that stood up first? Right here on the corner. Was that you that stood up first? You just couldn't help yourself, yes. It was the call to worship. So, <laughs> so why did we do that? Here's why we did that. Because we have to let the band get things out of their system every once in a while, just so they'll play the songs we need them to play. Oh my goodness. You know, um, so, so when I watched the, the rehearsal and they sent me this stuff ahead of time, it just reminded me that, you know, for, for some of you, that was a reminder of a season of life. I can see some of the guys my age kind of looking like, oh my gosh, they're just thinking of high school. Some of you are, it reminds you of your parents, season of life, you know, or your grandparents, or it might have reminded you of a Cadillac commercial. Anybody like, oh yeah, I heard that, the Cadillac commercial. I have no idea who's saying that, right? But you know what it reminds all of us of? It reminds us that time just moves on, right? And if we're lucky, if we're lucky, we get to get older, but if we're intentional, we get to get wiser. And the thing that determines wisdom is what we choose to leave behind and the things that we choose to carry forward. And some things need to be left behind. Some things need to be carried forward. Today, uh, we're gonna talk about one of the things that we should all leave behind. Well, I think there's a good place to start. But before we get to the (laughs) second part, I have to say, first and foremost, I don't know if he's saying it tongue in cheek, but I know that, first of all, it it came off terrible either way. You think it's funny or not? to say our worship band needs to play these Led Zeppelin songs to get them out of their system, which is already admitting you know they're wrong, by the way, get them out of their system so they'll actually play the songs we want them to play for worship. Just sick. Yeah, when you talk about getting something out of your system, that's saying something that needs to be left behind. And it's interesting they ended it that way. I think it's probably because it's on his conscience that we're going to talk about the end of that clip you just played, Chad, is some thing, you know, some things we definitely need to leave, leave behind or something like that. And I think his conscience, he knows this stuff is supposed to be left behind. This is the old life. Paul said, you know, talk about his old life being like dung, you know, and he counts all things lost for the sake of gaining Christ, you know. And we need to put Christ first. And it's really interesting because when he thinks about that, getting it out of your system, do you think they were getting out of their system or do you think they rehearsed like crazy? He says in that clip or the longer clip that he watched them rehearse, you know? Yep. They're rehearsing like crazy to get out of their system. It's not about getting out of their system at all. It's about them wanting to play their old stuff and the old stuff. Some of those guys probably got introduced to Zeppelin and didn't wasn't even a Zeppelin until they probably started, you know, getting introduced by some of the guys in the band. But what happens? Do you give your do you give your teenager, your teenage son whose hormones are raging and he's like 15 years old, and you say, I'm gonna buy you something. You go to a uh a drugstore or whatever and you buy them a porn you know yeah, porn, porn I grab back hey just get it out of your system is that going to get out of a system or is that going to ferment uh, I don't even know if they even sell those anymore at those kind of stores but I'm just assuming you know is, or do you say hey son I want you to you know you got you got a lot of hormones it just, I want you to get in pornography for all just get it out of your system no what you do is create a huge problem mm. and what they what and, and that's subversive right there because what he's doing he's allowing these guys to put it in the system of the 40,000 or whatever people have got a huge church they say it, everybody online and, and basically saying it's okay you struggle and there, how many of those Christians you know have convictions against that even if he doesn't even if he feels hey it's okay to to, to, to get into this kind of music uh, when he knows a lot of Christians stand against it what's what's even if you feel it's okay what does Paul say in Romans 14 mm. he says not to do things in front of a brother that you feel you have a liberty to do that could lead him down that path where his faith can be destroyed, and you can destroy uh, your brother for whom Christ died. Love says, hey, 
Uh, now, first of all, I don't believe it applies to that. <laughs> yeah, amen. We're talking about he, sin. He's talking about which day to worship on. <laughs> yeah, We're talking yeah. about sin here. Yeah, but amen. if he doesn't view it as sin, that he would lead other people down that path. Jesus said, it's better a large millstone be hung around your neck than you be uh, uh, they throw it in the sea. And then you cause one of these little ones to stumble the faith that you're going to have. So it's quite interesting when you think of that. Plus, think of some of the songs, Ramble On. It's just about being a rambling man and doing your own thing and do what thou wilt. Remember, this is the same man, Led Zeppelin, where Jimmy Page is in Loose Rising, standing before admiring the Lester Crowley, who he said he's magic, he practiced to get big, who puts do what thou wilt, which is the satanic maxim on Led Zeppelin 3, and just full of Satanism. In fact, one of the songs they did as well was, uh, and before I get to this next song, uh, in House of the Holy, this, not the album, because that, that song did not appear on that album, but it appeared on Physical Graffiti after that album. And the song says, you know, it, your head is humming. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm going, back. I'm going to stairway to heaven. I'm jumping to stairway to heaven already. But we got your, an explanation your, for that one. <laughs> yeah. Is your world spinning faster? Are you dizzy when you're stoned? I saw it in that song, House of the Holy. So your world is spinning faster. Are you dizzy when you're stoned? And that's, that's kind of interesting because Satan uses drugs to pry us, just like a man might use alcohol to open up a girl in the bar want to have sex with him or allow him to have sex with her. Uh, you're, so your world is spinning faster. Are you dizzy when you're stoned? Let the music be your master. Let the music be your master. Will you heed the master's call? In other words, the master's calling you. What master? The master's calling you through the music. The master's calling the world through the music that is also calling them on Andy Stanley's stage through these musicians. Zeppelin, same band. So your world is spinning faster, you're dizzy when you're stoned. Let the music be your master. Will you heed the master's call that he says, who the master is? Satan and man. Back to like, uh, you know, Billy Eilish and that whole thing about Satan being using her as a conduit. Will you heed the master's call through the music? Who? And then he, Robert Plant clearly sings Satan and man. In fact, you can even just go and type in How's the Holy lyrics by Zeppelin and you'll see it's Satan and man. It's Satan and man. It's no doubt about it, you know? And, uh, so it's really crazy, but they have another song called Nobody's Fault But Mine. A horrible, wicked song that yeah. Zeppelin sings. Nobody's Fault but, but, but Mine. The devil who told me to roll. The devil who told me to roll. You know. And when Robert Plant sings that live, the lead singer of Zeppelin, he talks about, I have a Bible of my own, but it's Nobody's Fault But Mine. He's not reading it. And the original song was, I got a Bible in my arms, but you know. They'll, you know and, but it's just, but guess what? That's one of the songs they did. That's so sad. That's one of the songs they did. And I understand it's Slurt Church, you guys. This is really, really, really wicked, guys. Very, very wrong. Pray, pray for them and say, and, and we don't want to have a holier than thou attitude. We're nothing. But we want to give all praise and glory and honor to our God. And we want people to be protected from the influence of the evil one because this is for keeps for all eternity, the spiritual war that we're in. And Satan is a foot, man. And he has stratagems. And these stratagems are, you know, Andy Stanley in this context is being used as a, a devil puppet. Yeah, no, and it's it's important, guys, that that you get a good grasp on why we're talking about this because of the spiritual nature. Obviously, there's a scriptural place for us to say these are the songs of fools. We shouldn't be doing this. Shouldn't be meditating on the counsel of the wicked. But then when you factor in the spiritual nature behind this, as Joe's already been mentioning about a number of these artists, literally, I mean, we're talking about straight Satanism. And guys, I have I have this over my head on every show here, and the reason why is because I came to Christ. After watching this, this is the 10 hour. I watched the three hour to come to Christ. I watched this one a week later for sanctification purposes. But but nonetheless, guys, I'm serious. Please, if you haven't seen this, use it as a tool for evangelism. Obviously, we have newer videos as well on some of the up, up and coming artists or some of the bigger artists right now and today. And we have stuff coming out, including, Lord willing, our Super Bowl video, Super Bowl video that will be coming out regarding the Super Bowl video for this or performance for this year for the halftime show. And also, as Joe mentioned, Billie Eilish. But guys, this is so huge. This is the magnum opus of the ministry. But really, it started before this on... And even, but yeah, you sorry. There, yeah. Hold that up again, Chad. Yeah. You see Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin right yeah, there? Yeah. Who's being, I mean, he's got his bow. It's like a violin bow, but it's not a violin bow, but he uses this weird music, right? But I have that in the picture because that's from Days and Confused when he's on, and the song remains the same, uh, the concert. And Jimmy Page, and that was my band when I was young. And all of a sudden, in the middle of that, all of a sudden, he's like, bam, bam, with his bow. Bam, bam, like this. Then he goes, bam, bam. And he does that to the four points of the compass. And when I started getting ready and I came out of uh, out of the world and came to Christ, I thought one of the bands I'm exposing is them. That's 
I started research. Wow, he's fully into Crowley and everything. And then guess what, man? I'm going through Equinox of the Gods, a huge book, which is a bunch of uh, writings by Crowley that were put together, a compilation of his uh, Equinox uh, uh, magazine periodical. And there it is. There's there's Aleister Crowley dressed in his magic garb with not a bow, but his wand. And he's going like this. And then there I read about uh, contacting or opening yourself up to the demonic entity. Uh, it's called the sign of the enter, you know, drawing Satan's power. And yeah, you go to the four points of the compass, he writes. And you do it counterclockwise, which is exactly what Page does. He's doing it there in Madison Square Garden. They're breaking concert records set by the Beatles, Zeppelin has. And guess what he's doing? He's practicing Crowley's Satanist on stage. And people are going, yeah, well, they have, they're clueless what's going on. And that, that same force, that same spirit is brought to you via so-called shepherds of the church today. And, you know, I want to say again, I don't know Andy Stanley's heart. And I don't, I, hopefully he's not like, how can I lead people astray and everything else? I think he's just he needs to wake up and realize it can't be about you. And you're going to have to make some hard calls. And even if your church drops to, 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 to 2,000, or to 200, or to two, or everybody forsakes you because you do what's right. You need to serve an, uh, an audience of one, and that's the Lord God, and then bring with whoever is willing to come. If people don't want to follow your ministry because you're doing what's right, well, at least you're glorifying God. And guess what? If you do what's right, he'll use you to lead people in the right way. But right now, I'm a heart breaks for him. Lord, give them repentance because I realize what kind of trouble they're in. Well, and, you know, praise God for Tony and, uh, and Tommy back there getting the clips because they actually have the video up from They Sold Their Souls to Rock and Roll of exactly what you're talking about. So praise God for you guys oh, finding that going clip Going through Stairway to Heaven? Yeah, and well, we're going to be playing <laughs> not just that. Uh, we're going to be playing actually not They Sold Their Souls to Rock and Roll, but the first presentation that was made available via DVD and so forth from Good Fight Ministries, and that is Rock and Roll Sorcerers of the New Age Revolution. And you going through specifically when it comes to Led Zeppelin, because we're talking about Guys, I know there's a lot of churches we could talk about. Yeah, Church church by the Glades. We could talk about Flat Iron Church there in Colorado. We could talk, obviously, about North Point Church and a number of other churches that have played secular music as part of their act, which is what it is. And when we look at it and see this, I mean, it's heartbreaking. We see that, obviously, it's in disobedience to Scripture. But also, when we look at it now, we're going to see the spiritual aspect I want you to see specifically, because you go in depth here, and guys, just watch this clip. It's an important clip that we want you guys to see from Rock and Roll Sorcerers. Yeah, let, New let me say just a word yeah. about that, because uh, that how long did that clip end up being, guys? Talking to our producers and stuff. 11 minutes? Okay, so they cut a couple of minutes out and what have you. And I, you know, so we decided to play Stairway to Heaven, uh, not the words forward, because if we play some of the words forward. I said, cut out the words forward, because we're going to get dinged, and they're going to take our video down. Even though it's on somebody else's site. So I was looking for, yeah, we were looking for Stairway to Heaven, that an expose I was doing. This is probably, you know, over 30 years ago. <laughs> so uh, it's not my younger uh, uh, brother. I'm in my 20s then. And I've been doing these presentations, believe it or not, for probably about almost 10 years at that point, and, uh, to one degree or another. And I was at a, so I'm in my late 20s, I'm 28 or some, seven, I don't know. And, uh, but we break down Stairway to Heaven there. And I was like, man, we don't even have it up on our own website. I found it on somebody else's website because I knew people had put it up. And it has over half a million views on somebody else's website. And I'm like, man, how come this is not up on our website? Because a lot of our people could see this. So, Tony, we got to get on that, man. How come Stairway to Heaven, our Stairway to Heaven is up on somebody else's site? Uh, anyway, uh, hopefully, you know, a ton of people saw it, though. So it's going to break down the importance of what's going on here and the spirit that's behind. Uh, and you're going to hear music backwards, you know, and which is what Crowley's whole yep. thing was. So. Yep. Amen. All right, guys. So here it is. Here's the clip covering the very song that Andy Stanley <laughs> had his worship band play at his church. So over and over again, not only in rock music, but people in Hollywood all over who are being called by Satan into his army. Okay. Oprah Winfrey said she was lonely and out of it until she came in contact with the, the universal hum. Okay, you see it over and over and over and over again. And I tell you right now, people in high places are being used by spirits to suck the world into the new age under Antichrist. And it's not just in rock music. That just happens to be what we're exposing today. In fact, your head is humming, and it won't go in case you don't know. The piper is calling you to join him. Dear lady, can you hear the wind blow? The lady that started off the tune. The lady that thought all that glitters was gold. Dear lady, can you hear the wind blow? And did you know your stairway lies on the whispering wind? 
Where's the whispering wind? Remember we talked about that? Remember that was the piper's past. And it's whispered that soon if we all call the tune, then the piper will lead us to reason. So he's basically telling this woman that she is going to hell. Your stairway lies on the whispering wind. Where does your stairway lie? So if I said to uh, somebody, hey, your stairway lies in the whispering wind, I'd basically be telling them that they're going to hell because the whispering wind was the piper's path, as we've already sung. Now, before we go to the, the lyrics backwards and look at Stairway to Heaven backwards, which I think we should, I want to show you something in a bootleg by Led Zeppelin where they actually changed the words to this song. They were, this, that was at Madison Square Garden, what you had seen right there. First of all, before we go to it backwards and before we show the bootleg, I want to open it up and I want to show you what it looks like on the inside of Stairway to Heaven. And what you see is a woman, she probably can't see from back there because she's in black, she's not shining white light at all, and she's climbing a mountain. Does it look like it leads to heaven? Looks like it leads to outer darkness to me, okay? In fact, the one who's leading her is a hermit of the tarot cards. The tarot cards are, are occultic cards to, to divine the future for occultists and people in the New Age movement and so forth. Crowley had his own deck of uh, tarot cards that he designed. The hermit from the tarot cards represents uh, occultic wisdom, occultic guidance. Who's the one that is guiding the occult, ultimately? Satan. Satan. Whose path is she really on? Satan's. In fact, just as Jimmy Page, you had seen right there, was invoking Satan, a little bit later in that same song, just a few minutes if we would have kept going, he becomes one with the hermit. His face blends in one with the hermit, who rep is a representation of Satan, ultimately. Because he was invoking Satan in that ritual. Now it's interesting that really the piper is, is, is Satan. In fact, uh, we said earlier the whispering path we saw was Satan's path and then we're, we see her being told, Dear lady, can you hear the wind blow? The pipe. And did you know your stairway lies in the whispering wind? I Meaning you're going to hell. Now Led Zeppelin at the LA Forum, they tell their fans basically where they're going. Tells them their stairway lies on the whispering wind. He just told them they're all going to hell, and at the end of the concert, they don't know what's going on. So look how Robert Plant says goodbye to his fans. He just told them they're going to hell. They don't get it. They're cheering Led Zeppelin fanatically. And he tells them that they've been, it's been a joke, basically. Listen carefully. <laughs> I've seen them do that over and over again in their music. Kind of laugh at, at, laugh at the crowd. In fact, right here, let's look at Stairway from another angle. Let's look at it from the angle in which uh, Satanists are looking at it and see what they're actually finding. Now, there's a few different ways to look at backwards masking, and uh, there's different types of what people call backwards masking. I'm not talking really about backwards masking, I'm talking really about backwards messages. In fact, one way to do it, which wouldn't require demons or higher intelligences to intercede, would be just to take straight words, take seven or eight words in a song, and reverse them. And then when you played it backwards, you would hear those words. But when you heard it forwards, what would you hear? You'd hear something backwards. It wouldn't make sense. So when people talk about how backwards masking is done in the studio, yeah, that kind of backwards masking is done in the studio. No problem. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about when you hear music and lyrics forward, and then you hear those same lyrics backwards, and it's a message forward, and those same words are a message backwards. Okay? And we're not talking about one or two words. We're not talking about something like the cat and playing it backwards and trying to get something like tack backwards and something out of the. We're talking about sometimes over 15 words straight. We're talking on Stairway to Heaven right around 30 words. Okay? And we're not only talking about that, we're talking about a song that wasn't engineered to be heard backwards, but came right from the spirit world automatically. Okay? And then we're talking about, if you wanted to make lyrics backwards on a song, you're going to mess up that song forward pretty bad, right? Well, Stairway to Heaven is the most popular song in rock and roll. So this, this destroys any kind of argument that, that comes against it. And what destroys it more is the lyric forward often has everything to do with the lyric backwards. And to take it even further, you can hear a lot of these same things on live albums backwards. Because it's the demonic spirits using these human beings. Do you understand that? 
So let's listen to it. Remember, first of all, that they were invoking Satan, that they've got it from Satan, and listen to what you hear backwards. First we'll hear a little bit forward. Listen carefully. Raise your hand if you heard anything right away. Okay, that was without me even telling you anything. I've seen a lot of hands go up. Forward. Your stairway lies on the whispering wind. Forward it says, and your stairway lies on the whispering wind. Backwards it says, because I live with Satan. Listen carefully. Raise your hands if you heard that. Quite clear, quite obvious. There's a lot more. Her stairway lies in the whispering wind, dear lady, just like the Led Zeppelin fans, because they, because their power is Satan. They live with Satan. That's, their, that's who empowers them, and they're following Led Zeppelin. They're really following Satan, because Led Zeppelin were just four puppets. Satan could have used any four and formed Led Zeppelin. It was Satan's music. Let's listen on. Backwards it says the piper's calling you to join him, or forward. Backwards it says the Lord turned me off. Raise your hands if you heard that. Forward it says, and it makes me wonder. Backwards it says there's no escaping it. Raise your hands if you heard that. Okay, it's quite obvious, and it's quite clear. You'd have to turn your ears off not, to not hear it, okay? It's really obvious what's going on here. Now, there is an escape. It says there's no escaping it. There is an escape, and that's Jesus Christ. In fact, he's the only escape. He's the only escape. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He said, if you try to climb up some other way, you won't make it. He says the same as a thief and a robber. He alone, he said, is the gate. And if you want life, it's in him. And if you go some other route, according to the scriptures, you're still following Satan. You can't pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You can't do it through Buddha. You can't do it through Muhammad. They're both still in their graves. Jesus has risen from the dead, and he's coming back again, and you better be ready. Let's listen on. Listen backwards again, and I'm not going to say anything, and just listen and I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you heard something before I even say anything. Raise your hands if you heard anything. I see hands all over the place, okay? Now listen to this forward. Forward, it, there's, you're talking about several words, like around uh, 17 words or so. You're actually talking about more than 17 there. Listen carefully. It, what forward is talking about the two paths you can take, okay? Yes, there are two paths you can go by. Backwards, they lift up, the demons lift up, because this isn't Led Zeppelin, this is spiritism, and spirits working through Robert Plant. Backwards, they lift up the backwards path. The satanic path. It says backwards, here's to my sweet Satan. I want to live it backwards, like the Zepp, referring to Led Zeppelin. Robert Plant referred to Led Zeppelin as the Zepp over and over again in interviews, and that's how they've been referred to for years. So backwards it says, here's to my sweet Satan. I want to live it backwards, like the Zepp, whose power is Satan. He will give you, give you 666. Listen carefully. Backwards it says, here's to my sweet Satan. Did you hear that? Listen carefully. It says, I want to live it backwards like the Zep, whose power is Satan. Did you hear that? Then it says, he will give you, give you 666. Not much into my albums anymore, so... He will give you, give you 666. Big deal. 
The mark of the beast will come out. People will take it on their right hand or their forehead. And then all of a sudden, they'll get grievous sores on their right hand. And they'll say, hey, what's going on? It's not working. There's some kind of reaction to this mark. And then before you know it, according to Revelation 14, everybody that takes the mark of the beast will be damned in fire and brimstone, it says, forever. And the smoke of their torment rises up forever and ever. Big deal. It's a big deal in this sense. The people that take the mark of the beast, the people that are rejecting Jesus right now, are not going to make it into God's kingdom. And we need to reach people and say, hey, the scriptures say, Jesus said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. We need to turn to him wholeheartedly. Where are you turning at this time? Who are you following? Not to follow Jesus is to follow Satan, according to the word of God. Wow, Joe, it's hard not to let it finish up there. But, you know, it is so important for people to really grasp and understand the spiritual reality uh, more than simply just saying, well, it's better for my life if I listen to this. It's better for my life if I listen to this and so forth. But actually recognizing that Satan is after their soul. He wants them to not come into the kingdom of God and he will do anything to keep them from it. And he is blinding their eyes. And and I, I'm just hoping that people's eyes are, are turning to Christ, looking to him and, and no longer being blinded by Satan here today. Amen. And when we support these bands and we, we basically help them, uh, we, we give them money. Uh, people that are getting involved in things that are contrary to Christ, anti-Christ, you're actually supporting the wicked. You're helping the wicked and uh, throwing money at them. People that are getting involved in pornography, they're actually uh, supporting pornographers. Uh, they're actually uh, in promoting the enslavement and the, the exploitation of women. Uh, even potentially sex trafficking, uh, and the scriptures say, uh, and when you got bring, you're bringing bands on your band on stage and having them do it, glorifying these bands, you, you know what? You're going to get people into those bands to one degree or another. You're going to get people to download those tunes. Man, I really like that. Man, they did. What was that song? It was Black Dog? Oh, I downloaded it. You're going to have all that kind of stuff happening, mm-hmm. and people are going to start not listening to the Christian music they were to do and seeing the Lord as much. And then before you know it, they're back on that that uh, grease pole as Zeppelin sings in House of the Holy. Uh, is your world spinning fast? Are you dizzy when you're stoned? Let the music be your, we meet, uh, let the music be your master. We heed the master's call, Satan and man. And here's a scripture I want, that I want to read that I think everybody should really pay attention to. Second Chronicles chapter 19, verse 2. Second part of the verse says, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Listen to that. Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord and so bring wrath on yourself? From the Lord and of course you want to help those who don't know the Lord to know the Lord but you don't want to help them in an evil craft that's being used to promote the occult and Satanism and so forth so uh, man like I said that we did that 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 I did over 30 years ago and uh, we haven't changed our tune because we're still in the Jesus tune and I remember when I was a young Christian maybe 10 years before I did that presentation when I first got saved I remember my dad saying Joe you know he goes, you're trying to tell me about Jesus Christ. I, I was in World War II, you know, and I've been all around the world, and you're going to tell me what the truth is. And I just held to Jesus ever since that time. Since I, when I was turning 18, I became a Christian. And he said, you're going through a phase right now. <laughs> and thankfully, I'm still going through that phase all these years later. And I'm more excited about that than ever because it's not a phase. It's about knowing Christ. And, and thankfully... Uh, even though I wrote a song about my mom and my dad and my all three of my sisters, my brother, all of them, you know, going to hell for my musical, you know, selling their souls for rock and roll in one of my songs. When I came to Christ, there was a 180 that was done. And they saw that my life was different. And then I said to my dad years and years and years, years later, Dad, I go, remember that time? I never said this to him, but I just thought we're, we're getting into a little bit, you know, was a bit, we were both a bit older. And I said, Dad, remember you said years ago, I was going through a phase, I go, now, you know, Mom, his wife, uh, Pat, Kathy, Peggy, Patty, uh, who are all Christians, and and Tom, my brother, who I just had lunch with today, I go, and myself, we're all in that phase right now, Dad, and and it's not a phase, it's about knowing Christ, knowing our Maker, and thankfully, he came to Christ, you know, about a year or so, he prayed and cried out to the Lord, and we talked about the Lord and stuff until the day he died, when he was about 92 years old, just a couple years ago, and you're not promised tomorrow, and you don't you're not promised another breath and you need to be thankful for every breath you have but the Bible says God gives grace to the humble but he resists the proud and 
If you're thinking, nope, I'm going to do my own thing, do what thou wilt, man. I'm going to party hardy, man. I'm, I don't have to follow the Lord. He did say, he that's not with me, Jesus said, he, he that's not with me is against me. He that gathers not with me scatters abroad. And I don't know if they cut that off before I said that because when I saw some of the clip, I'm like, oh man, I used that verse right there because and they sold their souls for rock and roll, which is done years later that Chad saw. He said, that's the verse that God used that I quoted that put him on his knees and had him do a 180 and turn to Christ. And so I think it's appropriate because that verse is so powerful. You're either for Christ, you're against him. You're either going to trust him and follow him as your Lord and Savior, or you're going to be antichrist. And your life is real short. The Bible says it's like a vapor. It's here today, gone tomorrow. It's like a breath. It's a vapor. It's a hand's breath. It says it's just short, man, compared to eternity. And the Bible says the point of man wants to die, but after this a judgment. And we're going to stand before God. We're going to be facing him in judgment. And the Bible says all of sin and come short of the glory of God and that we're all rebels at heart. With, we're like little devils following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that's at work through the children of disobedience. And you need to realize, man, you are on the broad road, Jesus says, to destruction unless you turn to him. And he did say, I'm the way, the truth, and life, and, and no one comes to the Father but through me. And guess what? We can be saved. Not because we follow him and be really good people and he's going to say, ah, oh, I'm going to let you in because you're a really good person. Uh, we're never going to be good enough to earn God's salvation. But we can enter into his kingdom because Jesus Christ died on the cross the sin debt that we owe and the wrath that God owes us because he's a just God was paid for on the cross. You see, God's wrath was poured out on his son who accepted that on our behalf. And he died. Jesus paid the price and suffered in our place so we can pass from death to life. That's why Jesus also said, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Right? Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, it's a free gift. It's a free gift, man. And we encourage you now to receive Christ if you haven't done that as your Lord and Savior, and have eternal life. There's been so many people, by the grace of God, that have used that video. Uh, then they sold their souls. Chad's one of them. A number of people, we hear it all the time. Everywhere I go, uh, I got saved through that video. God transformed my life through that video. But it's not the video that transforms people's lives. That gets them, when they're seeing what's going on, to open up their eyes, to have no fellowship with the unfruitful of so darkness, but to expose them. They see, wow, this is the darkness. But then they see Jesus, that he's the way, the truth, the life that he's the light of the world, that he's our creator, he's our redeemer, that he is the one that came to give us eternal life, that he's given us his word, his light. And he says, walk in the light, the light's here. Because the time is going to come when the light won't be here, and there'll just be darkness. So he said, walk in the light now so you can become children of light. Embrace Jesus Christ, the light of the world, so you can be children of light and have eternal life. Receive the gift he's given through what he did on the cross and providing salvation for you. Repent and say, God, have mercy on me. I turn from my rebellious ways and follow the ways of wickedness. And I embrace Jesus Christ and put my trust in him. I receive the free gift he offers through the cross and his resurrection. And you'll have eternal life. You'll be part of the kingdom. And for those of you who already know the Lord and are saved, let's keep pressing on in Jesus together. No turning back, man. We're almost done with our race. Let's keep going forward. Hell or high water. And guess what? We'll hear those words. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord as we enter into his eternal kingdom. We love you guys, man. Press on in Christ. Amen. God bless you guys.